Hi, hi, it's me, Chio. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, I'm Chio Zoe, the fantasy author of the Memory of Stone series with book one and two currently available in stores. I'm also a writer, mentor, and an author tuber. So today I want to take down the teaching a notch and increase the fun. And for that, I'm going to be talking about the top 10 things I look for when reading a book. Now, this is my um, personal list. It's not limited to these um, reasons, but I would say these are my top 10. These are my priorities of things I look for when reading. And I think it's useful for um, every reader and writer to know what it is they're interested in when selecting books. Obviously, you're allowed to read outside of that, but knowing what it is you want out of a book would help you narrow down your selection of books and also help you with the writing process. As a reader, especially if you want to be like a paid reviewer i think it can help you um know how to ha have your ratings also help you inform authors what you're looking for when you're reading their work so that you know if you're like a right fit for them um, as a writer if you, like hits these check marks of the things you really like in your book you know that you've written the story you want to write stuff like that just helps the creative process and the analyzing process flow smoother for you so you won't be confused on what it says about the book you don't like or what it says about the book you like without wasting more time let's get into it now the first thing on my list is diverse characters diverse characters i'm talking about age race characters brain chemistry all of that good stuff and i don't think every single book should have diverse characters because some stories um, the priority writing would make some of these things impossible to expand in. There are certain types of stories that require certain age groups to participate in it and things like that. So, but I enjoy reading about diverse um, characters in books. When I see people of different ages, it increases the character experience because I'm getting to see how people handle different things from different points of view. The same thing with race. Um, when you're writing from non-fiction to fiction, from real life to fantasy, just something about having different races is allows you to experience um, the world from multiple views. I don't even have to be like existing races, it could be um, black, white, or human, vampire, stuff like that. Just like having those different aspects of experiences just makes for a more interesting book also brain chemistry and people usually just think good characters bad characters but sometimes we ignore the fact that our minds complete are completely wired so differently from each other so like when you take like those little things that makes those big differences and write into your characters you make for really interesting characters you wouldn't just see one personality type throughout the book stuff like that so yeah my first thing is diverse characters the second thing on my list is character growth and this one is like a huge 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 one for me because i think like there's sometimes when you want to capture a topic the characters might not actually grow you're just trying to prove like a point that's fine but honestly when characters change whether for the better or for the worse it is beautiful when you see how they are thrown into difficult circumstances or even like circumstances you think they're amazing like someone going from poor to rich or unpopular to super popular how they change or adapt because of these new things in um, added to their lives they remain exactly the same is the person that was against stealing throughout the story going to start stealing because of their someone in the family needs uh, medical care stuff like that it's just like how do their principles change how do their lifestyle change what is it that becomes a priority to them so yeah, character growth is very important in a story because I think that's like what's the point of writing someone's whole experience or something in a story and they remain the exact same. So yeah, character growth is important for a story. Number three on my list is action scenes. I love a good fight, but that is brawls, swords, magic, guns, anything fighting in a book. I love it i get so <laughs> bored not always but like i get bored a lot of times when i'm reading a book and there's no like physical conflict involved i guess that's why i lean towards more fantasy and action kind of books because there's always fighting someone has to fight in some way or the other and i don't like fighting in real life but when i'm reading about it, it's like oh my gosh it's so intense and i think even like if you read my books you see fight scenes and you understand that i should really like 
seeing fight scenes in stories maybe a bit too much maybe i should tone it down a bit but i think the action scenes the excessively described the over ridiculous even when you see the magic going off or you see the gun shooting and someone dodging a bullet and all the ridiculous things come on the more ridiculous even the better sometimes so those action scenes i think they really spice up stories i love reading about them so yeah a good action scene in a book would make me more likely to enjoy it number four likable characters now i don't even believe that i can't even like it's ridiculous that i don't have to add this to my list but apparently it has to be a thing now to say you want likable characters in your stories and i think people are getting like used to this thing of writing every single character being problematic because people think problematic characters make for an interesting read and yes it can they can make for interesting reads but they're not always made for enjoyable reads i think it's good that even while you want to show like the complexity of people and how there's not always a clean line between right and wrong there's just something about a likable character that makes the book well likable um the character doesn't have to be the good guy their personality just doesn't have to suck i like i read a, a lot of stories i hear a lot of stories people recommend to me and they're recommending it because the character is so problematic i'm like i've met so many problematic people in real life that i just want to enjoy a book with people that aren't problematic sometimes and i know this sounds weird coming from me because i've written some characters that are problematic or some cases not likable but at least have one character that is likable. It doesn't always have to be the main character, although it's preferred to have the main character be who is likable, but it doesn't have to always be the main character. Um, just having one person that with such a huge personality that is comforting can really make all the tragedy happening in the book worth reading through. And yeah, it's like, and obviously having the main character be someone you like because most of the time you're going through the story through the mind of the main character. Having that main character be somebody that's also likable can really help. But yeah, you have options, just don't think every single character has to be problematic because there won't be like any comfort zone for the reader. And the reader is not going to have like this moment of, okay, I'm not seeing this character. I know I can relax. They're just going to be like on high tension, high alert that every single page they're going to turn to. Somebody's going to be making bad decisions or somebody's going to do things that if they're not necessarily bad decisions they are annoying so yes likable characters make stories palatable digestible whatever number five on my list is dialogue i feel like i've read some books that were just stuck in the description or inside the character's head almost all through the book like in a page or in a chapter you see like one two three four five lines maximum of dialogue and it's like aren't these characters communicating with each other what's going on here why are you writing so many characters in your book if we don't get to see how they talk to each other we only get to see um what they understood from the conversation like a character saying they were angry or saying that this person said this and that and we don't really get to see what that conversation was i think di dialogue is like normal it's, like <laughs> it's so funny coming from me because i'm an introvert who hardly goes out i hardly have dialogue but i'm saying please give me dialogue because people talk to each other so your characters should be talking to each other i don't think you should spend so much time just writing the story and ignoring the fact that you're writing people that we're supposed to be relating for from um, rating to therefore we should see how they talk or relate to others stuff like that so dialogue is very important it also shows us the personality of the characters the um just shows us different things about the characters if they like prefer the kind of people that prefer using big words if they're the kind of people that talk too much uh, you know, the kind of people that are funny when they talk or don't know how to get their thoughts across all of that is shown in the dialogue so yeah include dialogue in your stories it makes it more interesting it doesn't have to be all dialogue but having a reasonable amount of dialogue makes your story basically number six which is kind of like an offshoot of dialogue is simple interactions yeah, I get it. You have a story to write. This is what the story is about. The story is from them going from point A to B to C. 
So the like the majority of the plots and the dialogue is going to revolve around this, but those simple interactions are what make um, us actually even care or remember who these characters are and things like that. We can hear a character talking about their interest. It doesn't have to have anything to do with the story per se, but it's how they relate to somebody else. Maybe this person they are comfortable sharing their likes and dislikes with, or their dreams and ambitions with, or a funny story they heard or a joke they want to tell. Different things like that. It's like those little things like, who is this kind of person? Who are they going to tell these things to? The things that's like, I'm sure like, I'm sure like no matter like the horrible things people like are going through, there's always someone or an instance where they want to talk about something that is not that overarching experience. So yeah, those simple interactions really give us like help us connect better than the whole plot because how many people are really going through these exact same things the characters are going through. But those small moments like bring us back to oh yeah this is my life kind of feeling so simple interactions are important to me when i'm reading a book number seven on my list is world building with emotion and i this one like it didn't click for me until recently because i used to think i hated world building like stories that focus so much on world building and then i started writing my own books and realized that oh wow world building is actually um, spicing up, story, up, up the book then I read some books and I really enjoy it but then some I read them and I was like oh the world seems beautiful but for some reason I really hate that I'm reading about this and I realized why there was no emotion behind the world building it's just the writer or whoever telling us by the way this is what this place looks like moving on to the story kind of thing and it's like I don't want to just know what the place looks like obviously it helps the creative imagining process but i also want to feel what the place looks like and sometimes it's like cool to write this from a character's point of view so if this is the first time the person is seeing this if it's so different from the world they're used to if they hate it if they like it stuff like that helps us like connect or disconnect from the environment better what kind of smells are here what kind of um buildings right here what kind of um plants are people friendly does the character feel like people are talking to their friendly and are they happy about it or are you scared about it just things like that like helps the world building you can't just tell us oh this place is a large city with fifty thousand people and blah 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 i'll be so bored you have to tell us like the character was overwhelmed with how many people are around them at that time stuff like that just helps us see what the world is while helping us understand why we should care about what the world is like so yeah world building with emotion is super 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 important to me number eight is a present villain and i don't mean the villain has to be there two for seven for everything the main character or the protagonist does but i don't like when i read a book about a villain but we don't see the villain at all the villain has never appeared whether in disguise or revealing themselves at all until the very end and now you've built up this expectation for who the villain is supposed to be but you read about the villain finally and it's like this is what i was waiting for i don't like when i read stuff like that so it's like in order to avoid that having a villain that's actually actively involved in the plot is good if that villain has to be really active or really powerful to make up for the time they were missing so yeah having a present villain is really important to let us know why this character is even struggling and i don't mean we should always know what the villain is doing or who the villain is but in hindsight at least we should see how the villain influenced a lot of things so yeah that's my number eight number nine on my list is a book should be easy to read and this is like because of a pet peeve of mine as a nigerian exposed a lot of nigerian literature <sighs> i'm honestly tired of people using big words to write their stories and i understand literature itself like um literary fiction requires some certain complexity in its writing style 
but when your aim is not just to teach on a subject or even even when you're teaching a subject i think if you want to get your message across the best teachers know how to simplify their words their books their stories their instructions so make sure as many people as possible can benefit from the information so when your aim is to write these books and sell it to the public the general public who did not study the same um whatever philosophy whatever thing you did maybe maybe they will enjoy it more if you simplify things and like besides that when you're writing commercial fiction that people are supposed to be reading and enjoying how many people do you really think are going about their day using these big words when you see your characters using words that people don't use on the regular it's it's disconnecting it disconnects you from the story and i'm not like shooting every book that does this it's just why is it a norm now when you could actually write simpler and more entertaining works so yeah that is like a thing for me i like easy to read books because i'm not there to i'm not i'm no more in um school when the point of reading books is specifically to learn um, new words like i know people used to do that like oh read this book and highlight 10 new words you learned from the book stuff like that that is no more the point of why i'm reading i keep expanding my vocabulary as needed and i enjoy learning new words but why i'm reading these books is to enjoy the story itself to learn from the story itself i'm not learning english or whatever language is written in so when you write it simple it's easier for me to digest the message or to take in the entertainment or what have you so yeah keep your words simple more people are bound to enjoy your story that way and the tenth and final on my list is conclusion now i'm not saying a book should have like a period and <laughs> that's it what i'm trying to explain with this is that the story itself that we're trying to like get to the end of what the whole point of the story is we should get to that end in the final book or whatever whether of the standalone or the series should get to that end but after we get to that end should we feel like this is like a that this world was, that was created is just like a it's living in a bubble i i don't feel like that's a good idea when you just make that world a bubble whether we get an actual expanse later or not we should have a feeling or an epilogue at least that shows us that life for these characters continues life for this world continues that re actually gives readers time to spe speculate like oh after this this reader is probably now living on an island enjoying the money they made or, or just something just something to make readers know that they can keep talking about these books they can keep speculating on what comes after because we've given them as writers like something to dream of look forward to etc also as a reader i like uh, when i finish a book and i'm just like finally the suffering is over and i can begin to feel these characters can have a happy life besides the happy conclusion we've got stuff like that so the way you conclude a book is really important and i could enjoy a book from the beginning to the end and just that final line of conclusion can change my entire perspective i had a book that i was going to rate five stars i was set on it i was 100 percent sure i was going to rate it five stars hands down but the very last line the very last two lines changed it to a four star just because of what that conclusion predicted it did not conclude it in a way that we really know that it was hopeful or something so yeah how you conclude a book is really really makes a story good or bad so yeah these are my top 10 things i look for in a book in no particular order of course this list was random but these are my top 10 um maybe another time i'll make a video with other things i look for and perhaps i'll use like book examples to show you like so if you have like similar interests in what i like you see it from the books i couldn't do that for this video because well i'm super busy and time got away from me so i wasn't like 100 percent sure which book to use for what but yes if you like read a blurb of a book or see reviews of what people liked and didn't like you would know if a book is right for you or not 
so that concludes my video for today if you've enjoyed this one or learned anything from this one don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe thank you for watching see you next time bye